This is going to completely change the way that we successfully treat your tinnitus starting right now. Hey guys, Cliff Olson, doctor of audiology and founder of Applied Hearing Solutions in Phoenix, Arizona. And in this video, I'm talking about the groundbreaking Apple hearing study that just identified a connection between tinnitus and heart rate variability. Okay, so tinnitus is a phantom ringing or buzzing sound that you typically hear when you have a hearing loss. Of course, even without hearing loss, many people can also experience tinnitus, perhaps yourself included. And for some people, the ringing and buzzing is so bad that they need treatment to be able to deal with it. But the one thing that drives me completely crazy about tinnitus as an audiologist is that our ability to identify the effectiveness of a treatment is completely reliant on subjective perception. Basically, in order to identify if the treatment we're using on you is actually working is, do you think it's working? If the answer is yes, then great. But if the answer is no or I don't know, then what the heck are we supposed to do to adjust your treatment to be more effective? This would be roughly the equivalent of an oncology physician asking you if your cancer treatment is going well based on how you're feeling, rather than using objective markers like blood testing or imagery to identify if your cancer is headed towards remission. And just like cancer, if we're trying to identify if your tinnitus treatment is going well, we should really have some type of an objective measure rather than just asking you how you're feeling. This is why I think this new Apple hearing study is going to completely change the game when it comes to treating tinnitus. But before I explain how and what this study is about, do me a huge favor, click the like button, it really helps out the channel. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel with notifications turned on, go ahead and do that as well, it is greatly appreciated. And let me know down in the comment section if you have ever treated your tinnitus and how well that went. Okay, so back in 2019, Apple launched a study in collaboration with the University of Michigan to advance the understanding of sound exposure and its impact on hearing health. This study had more than 160,000 participants that all answered survey questions and performed app-based assessments to characterize their experience with tinnitus. And of this massive group, 15% of them experienced tinnitus on a daily basis. That might make this study the single largest scale tinnitus study ever done. Their goal was to identify if an individual's tinnitus severity was associated with lower heart rate variability which is a terrific objective indicator of whether or not someone is under stress. Now, it is widely accepted in the research that tinnitus and stress go hand in hand. When your stress levels are higher, typically your tinnitus is worse. When your stress levels go lower, typically your tinnitus gets better. But the perception of stress itself is also subjective, and most people perceive stress differently, and some people don't even perceive stress at all, even though they're extremely stressed out. So having an objective measure of stress could be extremely valuable when it comes to treating tinnitus. Similar to how having blood tests and imaging can be very valuable to an oncology physician when they're evaluating your cancer. So what exactly is heart rate variability and how can we use this as a proxy for your stress levels? Heart rate variability is the time delay between your heartbeats and this typically ranges between 50 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds between heartbeats and a healthy adult. It is largely impacted by your autonomic nervous system, which is in control of your involuntary physiological functions. The autonomic nervous system can be broken down into two separate categories, your sympathetic nervous system and your parasympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system is responsible for your fight or flight response. And when you're using your sympathetic nervous system, it reduces the variability of your heart rate, which would be something like this. Let's say that you have a heartbeat and then the gap between your next heartbeat is 51 milliseconds. And then the gap between your next heartbeat is 54 milliseconds. And then the gap between your next heartbeat is 52 milliseconds. And the gap between your next heartbeat is 55 milliseconds. Essentially, there's very little variability in the time delay between your heartbeats. Then you have your parasympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for your rest and digest response. There is much greater variability of the time delay in between your heartbeats in this particular part of your nervous system. This would look something more like this. You have a heartbeat, then you have a 55 millisecond gap. Then you have another heartbeat and you have a 95 millisecond gap. Then you have another heartbeat with a 75 millisecond gap, and then another heartbeat with an 85 millisecond gap. Ideally, you want to have more variability in between these heartbeats, meaning you're spending more time in your parasympathetic nervous system, which means that you are less stressed. Now, for them to determine this link between heart rate variability and tinnitus, these over 72,000 participants wore an Apple Watch for darn near four and a half years, all the way from September of 2020 to March of 2025. Their heart rate data was collected over the course of a minute at six different intervals throughout the day. 
This was done 30 days prior to them completing a survey about their tinnitus and then another 30 days afterwards. And here's what the researchers found. This first graph shows that on average, heart rate variability was lower when tinnitus interfered more with their hearing. This next graph indicated that their heart rate variability was lower when the tinnitus sounded louder. This third graph indicated that their heart rate variability was lower when their tinnitus duration lasted longer. And this fourth graph indicated that their heart rate variability was lower when the tinnitus occurred more frequently. And remember, lower heart rate variability indicates that they're spending more of their time in their sympathetic nervous system, which is responsible for their fight or flight response, which is a sign of stress. Ideally, you want more heart rate variability, which is a sign that you're spending more time using your parasympathetic nervous system, which is a sign of low stress. So that's great. They've identified a link between heart rate variability and your tinnitus. But what does that ultimately mean when it comes to treating your tinnitus? Well, it means that if you want to reduce your tinnitus interference, loudness, duration, and frequency, then you need to focus on increasing your heart rate variability through tinnitus treatment and lifestyle modification. And the only way to know if you're actually improving your heart rate variability is to measure it. This is why any tinnitus treatment that you do at this point should include biometric monitoring. And as of right now, the only places that you can go to get biometric monitoring with your tinnitus treatment is a modern tinnitus specialty center. Back in 2023, tinnitus expert Dr. Craig Casper and I co-founded Modern Tinnitus to bring biometric monitoring to tinnitus clinics across the United States. Our proprietary and patent-pending Modern Tinnitus Base Camp uses a variety of different wearables, including Apple Watches and Fitbits, to monitor your objective biometric data, including sleep quantity and quality, movement and exercise, and yes, heart rate variability all of which can be used as an objective measure of the effectiveness of your tinnitus treatment no matter what type of tinnitus treatment you're using. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're using linear bimodal neuromodulation to address your tinnitus. If linear has you headed in the right direction, then we should see an objective improvement in your biomarkers. If not, then your provider may need to adjust your linear treatment or switch to a different treatment altogether to maximize your treatment success. If you're using lifestyle modification strategies or different supplements to try to improve your tinnitus symptoms, then it should show an objective improvement in your biomarkers as well. Essentially, you no longer have to take a shot in the dark when it comes to tinnitus treatment if you can objectively prove that that treatment is working. And in my opinion, this Apple hearing study validates what we've been doing at Modern Tinnitus with our Modern Tinnitus Specialty Centers using biometric monitoring to see how much benefit you're getting from your tinnitus treatment. In fact, at this point, I'm not even sure how you could maximize your tinnitus treatment success unless you were using some form of biometrics. Now, if you'd like to learn more about biometric monitoring or find a modern tinnitus specialty center in your area, make sure that you check out our website, moderntinnitus.co. Overall, I've got to say that the past two years when it comes to treating tinnitus has been incredible when it comes to the research that's come out. Not only are researchers identifying completely new tinnitus treatments, but they're also starting to turn tinnitus from a subjective condition into an objective condition, which is much easier to treat. And the crazy part is, you don't even have to wait anymore because this technology exists right now.